Well, welcome everybody, and thanks for joining me today. Um, we're gonna, you know, I, I was thinking about speak, reaching out to uh, our colleagues, our associates, our, our populace of people that we work with, and talk a little bit about what's happened over the last uh, couple of months. Well, as, uh, unless we were living under a rock or living in a cave, uh, we're going to have a new administration. We're going to have the 45th president of the United States. But although that may be political, I think it's very important for us to understand uh, the certainty and uncertainty that that's going to, that that's going to uh, create. And I thought I would take an opportunity today to walk you through a little bit about what our firm thinks about the various impacts that this may or may not have on the asset protection and estate planning arena. And I think a, a pretty exciting time. Uh, now understand, in order to take advantage of exciting times, we all probably have to look back at all the things we've possibly done over the last 10 uh, to 20 years. So what happened? Uh, so we had an unexpected political victory in the Republican Party. I don't mean to uh, speak uh, politically, but we need to think about what impact that may have for you. I think it's first to understand a little bit about our political process. Uh, although we have a Republican president, a Republican House, and a Republican Senate, we only have 52 Republican senators. Now, what does that mean? Now, we've all heard the banter and the planks and the talks about the lowering of federal income taxes, the potential lowering of capital gains taxes, the significant decrease of taxes on uh, businesses. Uh, also, we've heard about the repeal of the estate tax. Um, now, I want you to understand that in order to permanently repeal anything, it, it kind of is going to require at least uh, 60 uh, senators in order to do that. There was a problem that was experienced by uh, George Bush uh, a number of years ago, and that's why, if you all remember, when we did the estate tax planning years ago, we had a phase-out that occurred after a 10-year period of time. In all probability, uh, the, uh, the new administration is not going to be able to get 60 senators that are involved in uh, permanent estate tax repeal. So we may have to deal with the uncertainty once again of 10-year uh, planning blocks. And I think that's um, important for you to know. So what, what, what's, what's the big deal? So uh, the probability of a change in the estate tax uh, as we look at it is very, very high. I think that uh, there's been oh, numerous uh, alternatives that have been uh, floated around uh, Washington. So let me take you through a few of them and see how it could impact uh, all of you. One impact, of course, is that in, in the repeal uh, of the estate tax or the temporary repeal of the estate tax, which creates, again, a planning opportunity, what will take its place? Well, there are a number of various different choices. One choice that seems to be bandied around quite a bit is the replacement of our estate tax with a Canadian style inheritance tax system. What that would do would inherently say that when assets pass from generation one to generation two, upon the passing of those inherited assets, that it would impose a capital gains tax above the basis. So in other words, if we had uh, $10 million worth of uh, assets and a uh, $3 million basis, there'd be a $7 million gain uh, to our beneficiaries. That $7 million could be potentially subject to anywhere from a 15 to a 20 percent uh, capital gains tax. I think a lot better than 40 percent of the whole thing as our current um, estate tax system does uh, have, have. And I also think that uh, there's been talk of about at least a $10 million exemption from that capital gains tax and probably further exemptions for small businesses and for farmers. So I, I think that that has a very good probability of, of being enacted, whether it's enacted permanently or enacted for a period or phased in over a period of 10 years is yet to be determined by the uh, people uh, that we have sent to uh, Washington. Another alternative that we've seen is, uh, is that there would be uh, a, a, a capital gains tax that takes place um, at the time of the disposition of the asset rather upon the passing of death. Uh, that has a certain amount of uh, traction uh, that's associated with it. And uh, that would be uh, great because we would not have a tax until there was a disposition uh, of the property. Another one was that uh, maybe that the, if there's no disposition of the property after a specific number of years, maybe you know five years, 10 years, 15 years, 
then the government would impose a uh, capital gains tax. Of course, we always have the risk that 10 years later, if we can't get permanent repeal, that the estate tax will come back in flying colors, so we're all not out of the woods. I think that it's really important uh, from, from this perspective to understand that we have a great opportunity to do some planning. You know, many advisors are banding around, well, let's wait and see. I think wait and see is very important, but I think we need to take advantage of those tremendous opportunities that we have right now and those exciting opportunities that we're going to see over the next year or two or three. And one thing that's noticeably absent in all of the uh, proposals is not a repeal or a change of the federal gift tax system. I, I would imagine, best guess, that that will not be enacted because that wouldn't allow people, for example, to take $10 million worth of income producing assets at their higher income tax rate and transfer them without any gift tax implications to children and or others in lower tax brackets and therefore have a significant impact on the income tax system. So I don't think we're about to see any repeal of the gift tax, which once again opens up a tremendous amount of planning opportunity. The other thing that, that I think is important to understand is that whenever you're dealing with political uncertainty, we sure as hell don't know the outcome that's associated with it, but we do know uh, that the uncertainty tr tremendously uh, creates uh, opportunity. It also appears, uh, you know, on the income tax front that uh, the Obamacare 3.8 percent tax uh, is probably dead on arrival. It also appears that the uh, highest income tax bracket may be moved from 39.6 down to uh, 33 percent. But one of the bigger opportunities for planning that we really should start taking a look at into 2017 is the potential for a significant decrease in business tax. Although over the last 20 years, most small businesses to medium-sized businesses have used uh, pass-through entities such as limited liability companies, taxes, partnerships, and or S corporations, those dollars, those taxable dollars pass through and are taxed at the highest both federal and state tax, tax, state death tax levels. Now, uh, it appears that the business tax it may go down as low as 15% flat tax on business. If that's the case and we're anticipating that something very similar to that will occur, then we have a great opportunity to revisit almost all of the organizations that we have put together and perhaps change their tax structure um, at this time so that they can take advantage of that 15% tax, which I, I think is a very laudable and very important goal. You know, I, I think that uh, you know, when we're examining um, the, uh, the income tax uh, structures, and then in combination with the estate tax structures, uh, we need to be anticipatory and uh, really jump on this bandwagon as early uh, as possible. Now, one of the things that, that's important to understand from our perspective and ultimately your perspective is that in anything that we do uh, today, because of the uncertainty, we're able to craft into most of the documents and procedures that we move forward with a language that would allow us to pivot based upon how the uh, various different uh, tax proposals and the business proposals unfold as they come out of Washington. So although we move in direction A, we should be able to pivot to uh, position B as uh, more certainty uh, comes about. Now, another thing that, I, you know, as all of you have known me over the years, we've talked a lot about uh, asset protection planning and how does this all fit in. We've just talked a lot about taxes and estate taxes. And there are two components that really have nothing to do with taxes that I'd like to take a few minutes to talk to you about. One of the things has been the attitude in America has been for at last at least eight to ten years that if you have assets, if you've been successful, if you've been wealthy, then you're a bad guy. You've heard me talk about that over and over again when I've spoke to you, all your groups, and, and, and the people that I've addressed over the years. I think maybe now uh, success in capitalism may have an opportunity to uh, have a different change, a different attitude, and be rewarded. And this will have an impact on asset protection planning. It maybe it's not so much beat everybody up who is trying to employ people, help people, and make uh, our country uh, a, a better place, or as said vernacularly, to help make America great again. So I think that we have a great opportunity to revisit most of our asset protection plans that we've done 
uh, look at them from a tax structure, and even look at the ways in which we can help further protect um, your assets. Now, I think it's also important to understand geographically uh, where we are. Uh, although uh, we're here in California, California took a turn actually to become a, a little bit more liberal uh, as compared to the rest of the country. So for those of us that are residing in California, and for those of you residing in California, I think we may have to even increase the scrutiny of our asset protection plan. But another note that's really important is that nothing takes away the, the basic need for planning for our families, writing the script, setting the stage, and making sure that it's right for our capacity, I mean, our incapacity, or in the event of our premature deaths. Um, basic planning and family harmony, avoidance of probate, all of those issues do no longer, uh, are still not, so we say, subject to a wait and see attitude. I think that could be harmful and in some cases uh, deadly. So, so with that, uh, my admonition to all of you as we enter a, uh, a year of 2017 is that what a great opportunity, what a great time to look at everything again, to look at everything anew, what a great time to put together great, proper, and appropriate plans for your families based upon solid goals and objectives. It's an exciting time. I hope that America does become great again. I hope that those things that all of us look at, the world of capitalism and the way in which we have worked so hard to build all of our net worths remains good, strong, and protected. And with that, I wish you all a, uh, a great uh, holiday season.